Welcome back to Science Sundays. You've heard us talking a lot lately about monsoonal moisture, scattered showers, and isolated thunderstorms. But what is dry lightning? Well, let's first start with the birth of a thunderstorm. Thunderstorms often begin to develop early in the day when the sun heats the air near the ground and pockets of warmer air start to rise. When these pockets of air reach the lifted condensation level in the atmosphere, cumulus clouds start to form. Continued heating causes these clouds to grow vertically in the atmosphere, becoming towering cumulus, and the final stage of development occurs as the top of the cloud becomes anvil-shaped. A well-developed thunderstorm cloud contains mostly small ice crystals in the upper levels, a mixture of small ice crystals and small hail in the mid levels, and a mixture of rain and melting hail in the lower levels. Air movements and collisions between the various types of precipitation in the middle of the cloud cause those particles to become charged. The lighter ice crystals become positively charged and are carried upward into the storm by rising air, while the heavier hail becomes negatively charged and is either suspended by the rising air or falls toward the lower part of the storm. The air in the thunderstorm then acts as an insulator between the positive and negative charges in the cloud and between the cloud and the ground. When the opposite charges build up enough, this insulating capacity of the air breaks down and there is a rapid discharge of electricity that we know as lightning. That's why you always hear us say, when thunder roars, go indoors, because lightning is hotter than the surface of the sun. That's right. And it's one of the leading causes of weather fatalities in the United States every year. Now, lightning that strikes the ground is usually divided into two categories, negative and positive strikes, depending on the ionic source region of the thunderstorm. The negative strikes are far more common. The positive strikes are more intense and are more likely to ignite a fire. Now, the National Weather Service reports about half of all wildfires reported in the southwest region in the past 10 years have been lightning caused. And that is why you so often hear us talking about the threat of dry lightning sparking new wildfires. Dry lightning is a strike that occurs in a thunderstorm that is producing little or no precipitation. And so usually that's due to intense heat and dry air at the surface causing high evaporation rates. The drier the thunderstorm when combined with dry vegetation or fuel, the more efficient it is in sparking a fire during cloud to ground lightning. If it has been hot and dry for a long period like we are currently experiencing with our extreme to exceptional drought statewide, well then rainfall amounts need to be larger in order to moisten the fuel bed and lessen the chances of lightning fire ignition. Any small fire can flare up under specific atmospheric conditions, which firefighters often call explosive, such as periods of less than 10% relative humidity, warming temperatures, an unstable atmosphere, and of course, most commonly, increasing winds. When a new thunderstorm forms in the area, the associated gusty winds can quickly turn smoldering organic material into a raging fire. Thunderstorm winds tend to be erratic in direction and speed, posing one of the greatest dangers for firefighters responding to the scene. So what can you do? Well, listen for thunder and help us watch the horizon. And if you see any smoke out there, let the fire department know right away. And now just head over to our website, turnit23.com forward slash science Sundays to get links for your students to learn much more about thunderstorms, lightning and wildfire science. We'll see you next week.